You just got a prize now, or you were rewarded, sort of. Can you tell us more about it? Well, I am aware that at the annual Ghanifah Emi lecture that I held last year, it was, it was um, conceptualized to begin to give a prize every year to the best graduating students of the Nigerian Law School. And I know that a prize was given last year, a similar prize was given last year to the best graduating students. And I think I'm now the second recipient of this prize. And it's an initiative that is highly commendable. It will further inspire many more people to put in their best efforts in the academics, not necessarily because of financial um, prizes, but just because of the honor to be associated with a name such as Ganifa and me, it's, it's an immense honor and it's something that you would carry with you for all the days of your life, really. So that's the prize that I was just awarded here at the Ganifa and me lecture for 2020. Okay, so did you, I'm sure you um, saw some of the incidents that happened last year with the court ruling, court injunctions that lawyers were uh, maybe beaten up or uh, brutalized by security operatives. Did that give you any kind of shiver when, when you watch some of those things? Did you feel somehow? Well, as a Nigerian, not just last year, over the years we've seen numerous stories about infractions on the rule of law and different demonstrations that are less than savory in our, you know, in the country we're trying to build. And so it's not something that I would say I saw for the first time last year. You can argue that it's become more frequent and it's become more flagrant. And no, I wouldn't say it made me shiver because I'm, first of all, I'm a patriot. And I think it's things like this that should even encourage us more so. Because if you shiver and you become afraid, then you're letting the other person win. So these people that are trying to step on the rule of law, as, as, it, as you could put it, if you shiver and you become afraid, you are giving them the upper hand. And as such, I think more people should even be encouraged to advocate for the rule of law and the supremacy of the Constitution and the supremacy of respect for human rights generally. So I, I think it encourages more so than it scares me. Are these prevalent in Nigeria? Are they, are they present at all in Nigeria? Yes, the things I just mentioned are, are, are quite present in Nigeria, I would say. We've had numerous cases of human rights abuse. We've had cases of you know, disobedience to court orders like we spoke about at, at, at the conference today. So these things happen a lot in Nigeria. It's regrettable and it's something that we definitely as young people and young lawyers need to learn from and ensure that we don't repeat when and if and when we do get the opportunity to make things better or occupy positions of authority in our own country. Okay, some people would argue that getting 200,000 naira for becoming or for graduating as the first class student at law school is quite meager as against what people get for winning reality TV shows. How would you say that? Well, yes, I've heard that said before and, um, you know, the speaker joked about it as well. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to the monetization of the thing because take for instance the common example people say big brother africa right big brother africa generates so much revenue that for them to pay out that amount of money as as a winner's prize it, it costs them next to nothing you get it's it's a, it's a revenue generating thing meanwhile for an award such as this it's an honor it's an honorary award as you would say so it's not something that generates revenue the estate of Ghanifa and me is not making money from this program in fact they are doing a service to the community so naturally you cannot really expect it to be commensurate in in that sense but also I'm sure in other places you hear of some funny awards that people have received and I know I, I understand what you're talking about because I think there was a time I saw that the best graduating student of a particular university I think was giving 10,000 naira and those kinds of things sound a bit discouraging especially if the award is coming from a body that could afford much more than that like a state government for instance so yes I think in those instances it might be discouraging but in this instance this is an entirely different thing this is an honorary thing that is being done it's a service to the community by the estate of the late Ghanifa Emis. Okay, so finally, what's what's your best moment of Fanica, um, sorry, Ghanifa Emis that you can that you can remember? Well, I would say something that inspires, not necessarily a moment, because like we were reminded today, what made Ghanifa Emis so exceptional is not because he had a moment that everybody just acknowledged. Right. 
it was the consistency in his moments. So he would have these moments all the time. And I think it was his ability to always speak the truth. And I think that's something that is really missing in our country today because a lot of people are not in charge of their own conscience. Where you've acted without integrity, you've given another person power over your conscience. And so you have some public officials, you say, this person, why can't they say the truth? The truth is their hands are tied because their conscience has been sold. And that's something that I found so inspiring about Ghanifa I mean, to be as powerful and popular as he was, he would have had so many opportunities to have sold his conscience as well. I'm sure so many people would have approached him with bribes, so many people would have offered him positions of authority, but the fact that he was able to maintain his integrity and always say the truth, I think that's the that's that's one quality that I find most most admirable. So are you promising us that you'll be saying the truth always, regardless of what I would always say the truth, regardless of regardless of anything, because I think at the end of the day it's about who you, what you believe in as a person. A lot of people in Nigeria claim to be religious. We can question the religious the religiousness of the country later on, but you know, first of all, you know who you answer to. We are here on earth for a very temporary period, and if you know what's what 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 you're going to have to answer to your to your maker i think it would um, it would go a long way